and welcome to a lecture on visualizing relationships in data using Stata. My name is Chris Curran, and I'm an assistant professor of public policy at the UMBC School of Public Policy. Today we're going to be talking about how we can visually see relationships in data between variables using several of the built-in graphical functions in the Stata software. In previous lectures, we took a look at looking at relationships between variables using conditional means, correlations, and several other tools. Today, we're going to think about ways to visualize this so that we can see these differences graphically. Often, graphics are one of the most powerful ways to show relationships in variables and to convince users of um, information that we wish to communicate. So to begin, let's move to our state of uh, framework. You'll notice on the left-hand side of my screen, I have the do file editor, and on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the data output window. We're going to begin using some data that I'll load in the command that says use switch one product. This data is from the ECLS data set, which is essentially a data set of students um, in kindergarten from uh, several years ago. So we've previously seen conditional means, we've previously seen correlate. We're going to talk now about a few graphical ways to visualize the same relationships. I've loaded my data. I'm going to show you first one command that's always good to run before we start working with graphics, and that's the graph drop all command. And what this command does is it clears the memory of any graphs that may already be saved. One of the quirks of Stata is that you, if you already have a graph in memory by a certain name and you try to run that graph again, you'll receive an error message. It's kind of like when working with variables. If you already have a variable by the name of variable 1 and you try to create a new variable called variable 1, Stata says, hey, you can't do that. That variable already exists. So a nice thing to do in a switch or in a do file where you're working with graphs is to include this line graph drop all at the top. It simply tells Stata to erase any graphs that are pre-existing in memory and to start with a fresh slate. So let's add a comment, just reminding ourselves what this command does. Let's say that it deletes graphs in memory. I'll close my comment. All right, first then the actual graph command I want to show you is a bar graph. We previously thought about looking at conditional means or differences between some variable based on another, often a binary variable. So in a previous example, we thought about differences in test scores based on whether students had attended center-based preschool or not. What I'm going to use now is the graph bar command to demonstrate the same relationship. So let's begin by adding a comment that tells us what this command is doing. We're going to say it creates a bar graph of math scores by preschool status. We'll close that command. Let's quickly look at the syntax of the, the bar graph command in Stata. We begin with the command graph, and then we tell Stata the type of graph we want to create, in this case, bar. Then we give it the variable that we want values on. In this case, I'm going to use this x1 math and so forth. It's a, basically a standardized version of mathematics achievement in kindergarten. And I could just run bar graph with that. So let's actually copy that over and see what a simple bar graph would look like. So I've got the command graph bar and then the variable of interest. If I execute just that line of code, you'll see I get a graph that's not all that interesting. It's a single bar graph that essentially indicates that the average uh, math score among these kindergartners is around negative 0.04. It's a little kooky to interpret here because we've actually have the zero axis um, at, at the top of the graph so what it's showing us is that the average score comes down to a little bit below negative 0.04. Okay, it's not all that interesting. But what we might want to do is see how math scores vary based on preschool status. So in the second version of graph bar, I have added the by argument. So you notice I put the comma, by, and then in parentheses, I put this binary variable pre-K mutually exclusive center, which is just a 0 or 1 indicator for whether the student attended center-based preschool. Now this time, if I run the command, I'm going to see that the bar graph is broken out by a student's preschool status. If you notice, I get on the left-hand side a zero column, which represents students who did not attend preschool. And on the right-hand side, I have a column with a one, students that did attend preschool. Now I can quickly visualize a difference, a very stark difference in achievement scores. Students that attended preschool are scoring on average a little less than a positive 0.4 where students that didn't attend the center-based preschool are scoring on average a little less than a negative 0.3. So we have nearly a 0.5 or 0.6 um, standard deviation difference between students that attended center-based preschool and students that didn't. Now, if you think back to our discussion of conditional means, 
This graph is essentially showing you a conditional mean. It's showing you the mean of mathematics achievement conditional on preschool status. It's just doing so visually. And you might think, hopefully as you see this, that this is maybe a more compelling way to communicate this difference than simply showing the differences in means in, the, in a table or in a numeric format. All right, so let's close that graph. Um, one other thing I didn't mention on that command is that I also included this argument name graph one. All that does is it provides a name that Stata will remember that graph by. A useful reason for doing that is that if you start running multiple graphs without names, uh, Stata will automatically get rid of the previous graph each time you run the next graph. So by naming the graphs, I can keep multiple graphs in memory and not lose the graphs as I go forward. Okay, so we talked about conditional means, and we've seen now from a bar graph how we can show conditional means graphically. We've also previously talked, however, about correlations or relationships between two variables. And we saw previously how the correlate command was a very powerful tool for looking at the relationship between particularly two continuous variables. But what if we want to show a relationship between two continuous variables graphically? Well, as you can imagine, the bar graph isn't going to be so useful for this. Luckily, there's an option or a couple options that we can use in Stata to show relationships between a pair of continuous variables. So in this case, I've now taken two variables, the math test score and a continuous measure of the number of children's books in the household. And the first command I'll show you is the graph two-way scatter plot. And as the name implies, this command is actually going to create a scatter plot of these various points. So the command looks like this. It starts with graph, just as we did with the bar, two-way, and then scatter, and then the two variables of interest, our math test score and the number of children's books in the home. So if I highlight this command and run it, I should get a scatter plot. What we can see on the x-axis is the number of children's books in the home, going from zero up to about 4,000. And on the y-axis, we have the standardized achievement score. So we can see most of the observations are clumped at the lower level of number of books in the house. We might visually think that we see some slight positive relationship. There's maybe some indication that as you get more books, the test score seems to be higher, but you know, maybe not entirely clear from the scatter plot. It might be useful then to think about graphing uh, an actual kind of linear relationship between these two continuous variables. So I'll now show you a variant of the graph two-way that includes a linear fit or a line. So this command looks like graph two-way, L fit, the math test score, and then the number of children's books in the home. I'll highlight that command, run it, and this time I get uh, essentially a linear line plotted um, between the two variables. So now I can definitely see what I thought I saw in the scatter plot, which is that as there are more books in the home, we see a higher value of achievement. Now, finally, a nice tool of uh, Stata's graphics is that you can actually combine different plot types. So let's imagine that I wanted to see that scatter plot with that linear line plot plotted together. Well, I could do that by saying graph two-way, and then in parentheses, putting the details of each plot I want. So in parentheses, I'll put scatter in each of my variables, and then I'll follow that with another parentheses where I'll include L fit in the two variables. I'll highlight that line of code, and with any luck, I'll see both my scatter plot as well as the linear fit line graphed on the same plot. This is a nice way of both showing the distribution of the data, the scatter plot, while also clearly showing the relationship between the variable through the line graph. Okay, so in this uh, short lecture, we've demonstrated several different plot types that can be variable, can be useful for thinking about the relationships between variables in your data. In particular, we saw the bar graph, which is useful for thinking about conditional means when you have either a binary or a categorical variable. We saw the two-way scatter plot, which is useful for thinking about the distribution, particularly between two continuous variables. And we saw the L-fit plot, which is useful for being able to plot a line to actually visualize a relationship between two continuous variables. Hopefully, these three graphical tools will provide um, some useful tools for you to provide descriptive statistics as you think through various projects that you're working on in Stata. I hope this has been a useful video, and I look forward to you joining for future videos covering different topics in Stata. Thank you so much for your time.